morning. I'd like to welcome everybody to worship this morning, everybody here and those on Zoom. Our theme this morning is how can I keep from singing? I don't know about you, but I can't. Something I've always appreciated about East Union is congregational singing. I grew up uh, attending a church where the organ played so loud you could hardly hear the person next to you sing. But on Sunday evenings, we did meet with a small group of men nights, so I had some experience with four-part singing. If you grew up here, you may take it for granted, but I'm blessed every Sunday when we sing together. And just a quick uh, plug for choir. If you've ever thought about joining the choir, I'd encourage you to do it. Um, I always feel better after choir practice than I did coming in. So you could do some new singers if you're interested. So the announcements for today um, are in the bulletin and there's just a, several that we'll highlight. Today, um, after church's second hour, uh, is Bible slash East Union trivia. Sunday the 16th is All Sun Sunday. Thursday, June 20th is the Central Plains Mennonite Conference annual meeting in Wayland. If you're interested in ordering the Anabaptist Community Bible, there's a sign up um, below the mailboxes. You can uh, put your name down. Sunday, June 23rd, there's a scavenger hunt after church. Sunday, July 14th, there's a joint service and potluck with Bethel AME here at East Union. Friday the 26th and Saturday the 27th is Vacation Bible School at East Union. Joel will be out of the office Saturday, June 8th to Sunday, June 16th. Subscriptions to Rejoice Magazine will be renewed at the end of May, or at the end of June, sorry. Let Mary know about any new subscriptions or changes to current subscriptions. East Union Meals Ministry, we have openings from mid-June on for some good home cooked meals. Please hold Peter and Galicia Bravo Wigington in your prayers as the country of Ecuador is struggling with violence and political unrest. Signs of Hope this summer will be every other Sunday. Upcoming Signs of Hope dates are June 16th, June 30th, July 14th, July 28th, August 11th, and August 25th. Are there any other announcements? More of a thing on the mic. I just wanted to, this is Heather Hirschberger. I just wanted to make an announcement about next Sunday and the song Sunday you'll see out in the foyer. I have a display of hymnals um, that have been used in my memory. Um, some of them I barely remember, but um, they were in the church pews in my lifetime. And so if you know that you have a song you love to sing, especially out of one of the older hymnals, um, that you would like to sing. If you would write it down ahead of time, that would be great. There will be time during the service to make song suggestions, but for some of the songs in Voices Together or Sing the Journey or Sing the Story or even Sing and Rejoice, they are nice with piano or guitar and it's nice to have a little preparation for those. And if it's from a song that is from longer ago and not in a hymnal that is in our pews, then also it's nice to have a little of time to prepare for that. Um, in the bulletin, it, it could be read to sound like there will not be child care during church service next Sunday, and there will be, but um, there is not a second hour, and so after the service is when the toddler room will be closed, just to clarify that. All right, I hope you come next Sunday and bring singing friends, and we'll have a, we'll have a wonderful time.
Allison Sawyer for the worship committee, and last week we handed out cards that list the fruit of the spirits to hang somewhere where you'll see them often this summer, and there's a stack of the cards downstairs under the mailboxes. If you weren't here to get one or want another one, just help yourselves. And then also to plug the trivia this afternoon, or today, after this, um, come down and get your coffee and join a team for the trivia. There might just be a question about you. Um, and we'd like the kids to come and split up on the teams too and participate, but we also have coloring sheets and stuff for them to do, or any adults to do. was Warren Hoover, and somebody told me that it's Brian's birthday today. <laughs> he explicitly asked not to have happy birthday sung, but if that's the case, you should not let somebody know that it's your birthday. So, happy birthday. Okay, so for the call to worship, I'll read the one and you read the many. Oh, come, let us sing. Oh, come. Let us make a joyful noise. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord, the rock of our salvation. Let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving, making joyful noises and singing the Lord's praises. For great is our God. How great. Very great. For in God's hands are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains. The seas are the Lord's, for God is their creator. The land is the Lord's, for God's hand formed, shaped, and blessed the earth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. O come, let us worship. Let us sing to God, the rock of our salvation. I praise you, God, in the sanctuary and under the stars for your greatness and your goodness. With loud hymns and quiet prayers, with helping hands and dancing feet, with all my breath and with all creation, I praise you, God. Now we have congregational singing. morning. Let us rise in body or spirit, raise a joyful noise to the Lord with our singing this morning, our gathering songs. Our first song is out of voices together. Number seven, come let us all unite to sing. And if you want to stomp, clap, snap your fingers, I'm have at it. Number seven, come let us all unite and sing. I'll blow a D. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Come let us all unite to sing the hymn of love. Let heaven and earth their praises ring. The hymn of love. Let angels come in the way. Let every heart sing. Jesus, for Jesus' sake, our God is. 
praise indeed. Our next song is number 29. Number 29, come, now is the time for worship. song is number 101, 101. Sing praise to God who reigns. Number 101. We will sing verses 1, 3, and 4. And I will blow an E flat.
for our final song of gathering, reflection or adoration, number 130, number 130, beautiful Savior, blow any flaps. Our gifts and offerings. There are multiple ways to give, as you can see on the screen. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with good gifts ourselves, our time, and our possessions. We receive these gifts in gratitude and offer them to the world with love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Savior. scripture this morning is Psalm 95, verses 1 and 2. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. We're happy to have Rachel Sports and Moving Miller um, bring the message this morning. Rachel is the Regional Director of National West for Everance Financial. In her role, Rachel connects with individuals, churches, organizations, and communities across the Western United States in an effort to provide financial stewardship resources that include, or that helps clients integrate their faith with their financial decisions. Rachel can help connect you with the financial or charitable consultant best position to serve you. Before joining Everance in May, Rachel worked as Vice President of Advancement at Heston College and has experience with Mennonite Church USA denomination serving as the Director of Convention Planning from 2007 to 2011. She earned an Associate Degree from Heston, a Bachelor's in Communication from Goshen College, a Master's in Communication from Wichita State University, and a PhD in Leadership Studies from Andrews University. 
She also serves on the board of directors for the Central Kansas Community Foundation. In her free time, Rachel enjoys public speaking, hosting friends, family, and groups on their family farm, tending her goats, as well as traveling and camping in her pop-up camper. Rachel and her husband, Tyson Miller, live on their family farm outside of Welm in Iowa with their two young sons, Oliver and Amy, and attend West Union Church. Thank you, and good morning, West Union. It is a joy to be with you. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Well, now that we're all comfortable. Good morning, East Union. It is such a blessing to be here this morning. Uh, I'm pleased to, to join you all. It's, it's this is the second time preaching at East Union, and it's, it's always a, a memorable time. As you heard from the announcement, I recently moved back to Iowa with, with my family, which gave me the opportunity to accept the position with Everence. And for those of you that aren't very familiar with Everence, but I know many of you are, you know, you've heard of Edward Jones and Fidelity and all of those, and we're, we're similar. We do what they do, but we have the wonderful blessing of being able to integrate a faith perspective in how we serve our, our clients and do our work. We provide investment opportunities, wealth management options that are socially responsible, and that also give back to the church and the community. As a stewardship partner congregation, and if you didn't know it, that's what you are. You're a stewardship partner congregation with Everence. And East Union specifically, because of this, receives some of this giving back from Everence in a few different ways. One of those is that your church staff has a very low fee retirement plan with Mennonite Retirement Trust. They have access to a group health insurance plan through the Corinthian plan. Uh, Everence provides your congregation with $3,000 a year in, an, in annual matching grants, which we call the Sharing Fund Grants, to help those in your congregation who have come on hard times financially and need some additional support. We also offer countless free services to you, the church members, that in working for Everence uh, just over a month now, I'm learning all of these things. We give uh, discounts on hearing aids. And, and a $50 uh, gift for will preparation for the first time, and college scholarships and a variety of different things. So, as they said in the, as you said in the, in the opening, our mission is to connect uh, your faith with your finances. In addition to what Everence is and does, which is up on the screen, I also want to take a moment to note the long history that this congregation has had with Everence. If you didn't know it, your congregation is kind of a big deal in the, in the life of Evans. So Guy Hirschberger, who's on the screen, uh, grew up in East Union and was baptized here. He spoke regularly about how this congregation shaped him uh, in formative ways. And in his lifetime, he wrote several church-wide articles and books about how church members must care for the vulnerable and build community through mutual aid, helping one another, and see these actions as central to their faith. His writings and denominational influence was a, a, a true catalyst to, to get Everett started, which from its beginning in 1945 to 2011 was known as Mennonite Mutual Aid, helping one another. So in short, Everett is here to help. So we have this shared history. Your church member helped start Everence. I now work for Everence, but that's not all that we share. And it really is getting into the topic that we are gathered here today, which is we also share a deep love of music. Not just the sound of music or contemporary music, but the collective vocal music of worshiping God together as a body. According to my records and research that I did, East Union is one of eight congregations in Iowa that hosted a vocal singing school back in the day. These singing schools were led by J.D. Hartzler more than 50 years ago, and he hosted these singing schools all over the country in one half of the year. More recently, 
East Union has been a catalyst in organizing a choir for the Martin Luther King Day celebrations in Iowa City. And next week, you all are hosting this Song Sunday, which I think is a wonderful idea, where the whole service is dedicated to congregational music. It's clear that East Union has been prioritizing music for decades. Now, I am not a Sunday music leader like Warren. Good job, by the way. Uh, I also do not have my music education degree like Heather Hirschberger, and she'll be involved next week. But don't let that fool you. Uh, music has been a major priority in my life for decades as well. And throughout those years, I've learned the amazing power that music has in the Lord Jesus Christ. Music can remind us of God's goodness in our life and in the world. Music can re-energize us to move closer to God. And music can also restore us, restore our divided communities, our broken relationships, and even our hurting world. Music reminds, music re-energizes, and music restores. So, if you will, let's, let's dig into that. First, music reminds. I want to thank our front bench people, which we don't have any technically front bench, so I'm going to go to the second bench. So good job, good job. Uh, kids, if you'd like to, it's a great experience. You should try it sometime. Uh, you all have a, a special place in my heart because for the basically the first 14 years of my life, I was you, really until I was old enough to sit with my friends during church services. See, my mother uh, directed music at Lower Deer Creek Mennonite Church, the church I grew up in, all the time, and still does on occasion, except not this one. She's right there. Uh, she was a choir director. She started when she was 20 years old. Funeral music, everybody would call her. Sunday morning music leader, she made it look effortless. And all through that, I was sitting on the front bench. See, my dad would play the support role, so he would sing bass in her choirs and worship teams, or he would have the great privilege of moving the overhead uh, slides during the worship team. So they were up there together, and actually my sister and I had to sit up there with them. It was annoying at the time, but uh, looking back now, I am so thankful that I had that experience because it, it made me appreciate music. And it helped me see music as a symbol. See, God gives us symbols to help us remember things. The bread and the cup. Do this in remembrance of me. Music is a symbol given to us by God to help remind us of God's goodness in our life and in the world. Our scripture verse for today, I'm going to read it again. Psalm 95, 1-2 says, Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before the Lord, but come before God with thanksgiving and extol him with music and praise. Music is a symbol that can also take you back to a specific time and place in your life, back to a specific moment of impact. For me, when I hear the song, I'll Fly Away, I am reminded of the harmony of my dad's gospel quartet, the Deer Creek Boys, which they sang together many moons ago. I remember the hard benches that we had to sit on in the front bench, in what felt like every church in Southeast Iowa, on what felt like every Sunday evening. I am reminded of their coordinated outfits and the same jokes they would tell when they would introduce each other. And then also the strict instructions of when the event was over, how we would wrap up the cords and put the mics away, and where they went in the trailer. So our family would do this routine over and over again. Yet that song, I'll Fly Away, it never got old, no matter how many times I heard it. 
it caused my heart to beat a little faster, my toe to tap, my hand to clap, maybe some stomping even, and sometimes a tear to roll down my cheek. And now it reminds me of a place and a time I'll never forget. That song is now a symbol that causes me to thank God for my family, for the messages in those old gospel songs, and for parents whose favorite hobby was to sing thanks and praise to God. What a blessing. What song reminds you of a formative time in your life? What song is a symbol of God's faithfulness in your life? And what song reminds you of a special time at East Week? I'm so happy for you to do what you are doing next week. I think that's going to be really special. Lean in. Music, hymns, praise songs, they all have the power to remind us. That's why we sing on Sunday mornings. To be reminded that no storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock I'm clinging. To remind us that from God all blessings flow. To remind us that I love to tell the story of, of the unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. Music reminds us. God's goodness in our life and in the world. So how can we keep from singing? Second, music re-energizes us. As a child, I attended Bible memory camp every summer, and I vividly remember my cabin of girls sitting around the campfire one evening, and we stayed after the worship time to sing more together, and, and we sang Seek ye first the kingdom of God together. And for some reason, while we were singing that song, you could just feel something happening. And we all collectively decided that as, as little third graders, we wanted to accept Christ into our hearts. That song somehow re-energized us to pull closer to God. As a 10-year-old, a few years later, I remember attending a large gospel concert at at IMS, now Hillcrest, where the Kingsman Gospel Quartet was, was there, and they sang softly and tenderly. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's watching and waiting watching for you and for me come home come home ye who are end of that song, my heart was pounding. I knew I needed to do something. So I walked out, went to the bathroom, looked in the mirror, and prayed to God to be with me, to come into my life, and to take my burdens away. And yes, 10-year-olds have burdens too. I had committed my young life to Christ just a few years earlier, but that song and those words pulled me, re-energized me to, to pull Jesus even closer. In college, I will confess that I did not have perfect church attendance. However, I was in choir, and the songs that we sang kept me connected to the messages of God's goodness. God's love, and God's mercy. I vividly remember that one of the songs included in our European chorale tour repertoire was Ezekiel Saw the Wheel, 
to it. You've never heard it, but it's a very high-energy song. And I'll never forget singing that song in ya at Yaura uh, in the Netherlands. It was this small church with a balcony, and it was packed. And when we were done singing that song about Ezekiel, everyone stood up on their feet. They clapped over their heads. They were shouting, woo-hoo! And it, it energized more than just those in the audience. It also provided energy for me. My time in the choir and those songs kept me connected to my faith during a time that many young adults kind of push it on the back burner. After college, I navigated through life events, graduate school, travel, getting married, having kids, navigating career choices and a lot of different chapters. And whenever I would get overwhelmed or struggled or felt alone, God gave me a song that would bring me back, that would re-energize me to pull Jesus closer to God in. Here I am, Lord, it is I, Lord, I have heard you calling in the night. I exhausted, tired, feeling lost. When I was in Ireland in college, when I was lonely, that song was always such a comfort. Here I am, Lord. Tell me what to do. Tell me where to go. Tell me what, who I need to serve, what people need my help. When I rocked my children to bed at night, I sang that song so many times that, that it was one of the first songs that they could sing by heart. They're not really babies anymore. In the Bible, David often turned to God through song. He cried out, he thanked, he praised, he mourned, he celebrated. He surrendered to God through the psalm and even wrote 150 of them, many of them being referred to as songs. Psalm 8 was one of David's songs of praise. And it began with, Lord, O oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You who have displayed your splendor above the heavens. Psalm 30 is, is David's song that was offered at the dedication of the temple. That says, I extol you, O oh Lord, for you have drawn me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O oh Lord, my God, I cried out to you for help, and you have healed me. Music re-energizes us to move closer to God. So how can we keep from singing? Third, music restores. In times of stress or sadness, whenever I listen to music, I suddenly feel a bit calmer, a bit more balanced, a little more motivated to face whatever challenge lies ahead. And this reality isn't a coincidence. It is by design. Because we are, we are wired. God wired us for music. In fact, researchers note that we have a dedicated part of our brain for processing music, supporting the theory that music has a special function, a special place in our life. Last June, the Washington Post reported on research that linked, here we go, singing in a choir to reduced stress and an increased ability to fight serious illness. Join the choir, come on. Other studies have found a connection between singing and decreased anxiety, stimulated memory, increased lung capacity, and easing of depression. I guess King Saul really did know what he was doing when he would invite David in to play. Yet the power
power of music goes far beyond just the physical restoration. It also has the power to be a catalyst for community restoration. A study at UC Berkeley noted that singing together directly impacts neurochemicals in our brain, which play a major role in creating social closeness and connection, as well as a, as a sense of shared identity and unity. This was a well-known fact by my dear friend, Tony Brown. I first met Tony when I was a young 22-year-old college admissions counselor in Kansas. I was captivated by Tony's deep passion for bringing people together through music. At the time, he was an artist in residence at Heston College and was touring all over the country and the world. Over the last decade of his life, he launched the Piecing It Together Foundation, which took him to communities who were desperate and eager for his message of unity and reconciliation in music. His rich, baritone voice is, is unmistakable, and I'm sure that many of you have had the pleasure of hearing him or meeting him at some point. His voice and message is one that I have greatly missed since his passing last July. He believed that no matter the situation, no matter how deep the wound, that, that music could help resolve it. He believed that music could calm and comfort, heal and mend. And he believed this because he had seen it with his own eyes in places like Northern Ireland, Uganda, Japan, Music restores us. Our divided communities, our broken relationships, and even our hurting world. As we conclude this morning, I ask you for real. How can we? How can we keep from singing? How can we be content not singing? thanks and praise to God on a daily basis, and at the very least, a weekly basis here at church? How can we not wake up humming a familiar song that draws us closer to Jesus, that finds an echo in our soul? And I'll get vulnerable and confess that many mornings I wake up with, Lord, I need you, oh, I need you. Every hour I need my one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need The answer to this question is sadly easy. We get distracted. We get lazy. We get consumed with our life. Instead of waking up singing, we wake up saying, oh, I am so busy. I have so much to do. Oh, I, I, I just feel like I'm so behind. Things never go my way. I, what, what is wrong with my children? What is wrong with my parents? Or simply you wake up saying, ah, I'm exhausted. Even when it feels hard, I encourage you to keep singing. And I'm preaching to myself, by the way. I challenge you to incorporate music, and not just secular music or the sound of music, but music that gives thanks and praise to God on a daily basis, working it into, as a daily spiritual practice. You know, make a playlist on your phone, get a, get a Tony Brown CD, join the choir, uh, get some friends around the piano, whatever integrate it into your daily practice. I challenge also for you to make church a priority so that you can take part in collective music making together at least once a week. And I understand that there's going to be times when, when things aren't going well and, and church is probably the last place you want to be where everybody else seems to have it all together. But I would say Letting yourself fall into worship is the best way to find yourself 
to start putting the pieces back together. Get lost in the music. These may seem like small ideas, but they can make a really big impact in your life and your community. I also challenge you to keep that scripture verse that we read today close by so that you can start your days with it. Have it by your bed so that you can wake up reading, come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God with thanksgiving and extol him with music and praise. Go. Be reminded, be re-energized, and be restored. And keep singing. Keep singing those praises for our Lord Jesus Christ. Dear loving God, thank you so much for those gathered here today. I just ask a special blessing that you pour out your, your love. Give them the energy to, to seek out you through worship, through music and song. Please walk with us, Lord, as we go about our days and our weeks. So we can sing praise to you. Amen. Rachel, for the wonderful message, put some of the points, affirmation, action, like the fries together, body or spirit, for a song or response. Number 605, the stand is able. Number 605, my life flows on. I'll blow a G.
signs of hope. No signs of hope this week. Well, I'm your sign of hope. Let's sing. Let's sing for hope and joy. Let's uh, let's rise together, body or spirit. Voices in forte. Loud number eight forty seven. You shall go out with joy. This is one of my favorite sending blessing songs to take us into this week. Number eight forty seven. Now blow an E flat. Okay, mm Heather. -hmm. E flat. Mm -hmm. You shall go out. Okay. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with ease. The mountain and the hills will break forth before you. May we sing with one voice for joy to the Lord. May you shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. May the music of the Lord sustain now, tomorrow, and the days to come. With thanksgiving in your heart, go in peace. <laughs> 